What's up people, Craig Lopez here and welcome to Songwish. So today we're going to be talking about Remedy 2 and looking at three different use cases for this awesome MIDI sampler. So first I'm going to show you how you can MIDI sample a song that is instantly recognizable and turn it into something completely new. So in my case I'm going to show you how I made this. From Back and Black by ACDC. Second, I'm going to show you how you can route Remedy 2 to multiple instruments simultaneously so you can jam out new ideas in real time, like this. And third, I'm going to be showing you how you can combine MIDI samples from different songs to create a B section for a track. So in my case, I'm going to be combining Back and Black with Eye of the Tiger by Survivor. Sounds like this. And turn it into this. So for those of you that don't know, Remedy 2 is a MIDI sampler, meaning you can load any MIDI file into the plugin, and Remedy 2 will allow you to sample the musical notes contained within that file, and quickly chop, time stretch, and pitch shift loops of that MIDI with the intention of routing the results into other instruments. And if that's the kind of thing that you like to watch, then for sure you're in the right place, so hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell to keep up to date on all things Songwish, and for more videos like these. Right, so first things first, let's just have a look at how I have this set up initially. So I've got the internal sound engine in Remedy 2 turned off. To do that, you just go up to this cog, and turn off the radio button associated with internal sound. And now I'm just going to route the output of Remedy 2 into this piano. In Cubase we just need to go to MIDI inputs and select the MIDI out for Remedy 2. We then need to make sure we have monitor enabled so that when we reselect the Remedy 2 channel we're still going to hear the output of the piano channel. So now for the fun stuff. So of course Remedy 2 comes preloaded with all of these MIDI files. All of them are in the public domain and therefore copyright free. But there are of course thousands and thousands of MIDI files that you can find freely available on the internet. Now most of these are fan made so they will differ in quality and musicianship depending on whereabouts you get them from. But much in the same spirit as when we're digging for audio samples. We can have the same kind of fun digging for MIDI samples. So I have set up a dedicated MIDI folder on one of my hard drives. And you can see I've favorited the folder by clicking the star icon. So it's always going to be very easy to find. Let me click on it. Go to rock. And I'm going to choose this one, ACDC Back and Black. And you can see I've actually got five versions of this, which goes back to what I was saying about the quality of these files. They differ massively from a site to site. But I just wanted to get some very famous, instantly recognizable tracks for the purposes of this video so that you can really hear how much I changed them using Remedy 2. So I'm going to select this one. And by default, it is loaded onto this first pad, which we can see is labeled C minus 2. So what I'm going to do with my MIDI keyboard is transpose it down by three octaves. And with this wrench icon highlighted, I can now use my MIDI keyboard to audition four bar slices of this MIDI file. Now, if I go over to this filter section, you can see we now have a whole bunch of different tracks available. Now the label of these tracks again will depend on the quality of the MIDI file. But this one just happens to be quite well labeled. So I'm going to turn off a cymbal, bass drum, snare, and bass. OK, 
Okay, so now we have something kind of resembling back and black. I want my slices to be a little bit shorter. So I'm going to set my slice size to two. And I want these double chords here to trigger as soon as I hit a key. So I'm going to use the shift function. And switch it to 1.5. But of course, the fun really begins when we map Remedy to some more experimental kind of sounds. So to begin with, I haven't mapped to this synth sound in Diva. I also haven't mapped to these plucks, which is a more rhythmical preset. as well as this kind of lo-fi arpeggiator. And if I enable the monitor on all three of these, we now get this. But let's take it one step further. This time I'm going to map the same instance of Remedy into this scaler. And you can see I have the internal sound engine turned off. But I've actually got it in perform mode and on bass and on this basic 12 preset. And then I've mapped that to two separate bass instruments. This one by Diva and this sub bass. So if I monitor enable those, let me play this along to a drum beat. Once I've recorded that in and tidied it up a bit, we now have a definite vibe for the A section of our track. So now that I've made a vibey A section by MIDI sampling the most vibey riff there is out there, I really want an epic feel in B section. So let's MIDI sample an epic track. So yeah, let's go for Eye of the Tiger. And let's audition that. So let's take the drums out, synth, the melody. And I'm going to transpose this up for semitones so that it's in the same key as our A section. And then I'm going to hit this freeze button here. And what freeze does is it freezes whatever notes are on the first beat of each slice. Let's go back to the filter. Let's take the bass out. And now you can hear we have a nice palette of chords to choose from. Let's run with that. Nice little bit of variation on the chords, the second run through. Like it. Okay, so now I obviously have a new instance of Remedy loaded up, but I also want to use some of the instruments that I've already got on the track. The problem is I already have their MIDI inputs coming from the first version of Remedy. So what I'm going to do to circumnavigate that is add a new MIDI track. And I'm going to take the MIDI from my Eye of the Tiger Remedy. And my output, I'm going to set to not connected. I'll set my channel to one, just to be on the safe side. And go down to my MIDI sends. 
And now you can see I can send this MIDI to four different channels. So let's start off by sending it to my plucks. See how that sounds. I also want to send it to the bass, but I don't want the same bass rhythm that was happening in section A. So what I've done is I created a different scalar and I've still got it in perform mode set to bass, but this time I have a different rhythm, basic 17. And then I've set up another MIDI track in the MIDI sends, sending this one to my two separate bass channels. Let's have a listen to that. Now to me the bass in this section is a little bit too low compared to the A section. But what I can actually do is before I send the MIDI to these MIDI sends, is use a MIDI modifier to transpose the MIDI by an octave or 12 semitones. Let's do that for the Diva bass and for the uh, sub bass too. Let's have a listen to that now. <laughs> Very cool. And I just want to point out that apart from the drums, which I obviously programmed, the only thing I've actually recorded are these two instances of Remedy. But yeah, let's have a listen. Yeah, the second bass section is a little bit busy, but because this is all MIDI, we can just record, enable everything, and hit record. And now I can just edit away until my heart's content. Okay, so that's it for now. And I really do hope you have as much fun playing with Remedy 2 as I've been having. We put all the details in the description below, just underneath that like and subscribe button. So if you haven't checked out the demo, go try it out now. Anyway, I've been Craig Lopez. This has been Songwish. Now go make some music. Peace.